Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, uh, Dr. Venkatrakam Chittori, School of Engineering from Asia Pacific University. I would like to invite uh, Dr. KVL Narayana, uh, who will be talking on the wireless sensor network and applications today. Uh, before uh, I hand over the session to Dr. KVL Narayana, uh, I would like to introduce uh, the resource person to you all. So Dr. KVL Narayana is uh, currently a senior associate professor of School of Electrical Engineering at uh, Vellur Institute of Technology, Vellur, India. So he has over 17 years of uh, experience in both uh, teaching and re uh, research. And he has a vast experience in uh, conducting various research projects, guiding PhD students, and uh, publishing uh, papers. In fact, he has authored more than uh, 50 research papers and he has published in various uh, peer-reviewed journals. He, has, he also has book chapters in his account. His uh, main uh, research interests uh, include the areas of sensors and signal conditioning, measurements, wireless sensor network, optimization, process instrumentation, and virtual instrumentation. Okay. So I would request uh, Dr. KVL Narayana to take over the paper. Thank you. So, okay. So, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chituri. Uh, a very good morning, uh, everyone. So, I would like to thank Dr. Chituri for introducing me to the research fraternity of your uh, institute, Asia Pacific University of Technology and Innovation. I would also extend to thank the administration of College of Engineering. Asia Pacific University for giving me this uh, wonderful opportunity to discuss the basic concepts of wireless sensor networks and its uh, applications. Uh, so now let me start the expert talk on the topic, today's topic, wireless sensor networks and its applications. So before uh, entering into the outline of the lecture, uh, first I would like to tell to whom this particular lecture is targeted. So basically, this lecture is uh, targeted to the undergraduate, postgraduate and the research students who seek to understand the basic concepts of wireless sensor networks and its applications and their use in their research. So coming to the outline of the today's talk, I am going to start this particular lecture uh, with the different types of wireless sense networks. Before entering to the wireless sensor networks, let us discuss what is a wireless network and what are the different types of wireless networks. Where do wireless sensor networks fit among various types of wireless networks? And after that, we will uh, briefly discuss the main components involved in the wireless sensor networks and uh, various components involved in the wireless sensor node and various uh, Topology in uh, topology involved in the wireless sensor networks and the communication aspects, protocols, etc. And later we will start discussion on the applications part. That is the second part of our talk. That is the application of wireless sensor networks. At the end, uh, I would like to give, give some research issues in the development of or uh, the design of wireless sensor networks. And after that, we will conclude this lecture. So basically. So what is meant by network? Basically, the network is a group of uh, uh, devices which are connected, interconnected to perform a specified task. So that is nothing but a network. So there are different types of uh, wireless sensor networks. So as you know, there are uh, two types of uh, technologies emerged so far. One is the wireless uh, technologies and the wired technologies. So nowadays, uh, everyone is uh, preferring wireless technologies because of its uh, flexibility, because of its uh, uh, user mobility and network access and so on. So basically, the wireless uh, networks uh, enable two or more devices to communicate without the physical medium. Whereas in the wireless technologies, we communicate the data through cables. So basically, in the wireless uh, networks, uh, the transmission takes place. Uh, through the radio frequency means. 
so basically the transmission usually takes place by means of radio transmission whereas in the wired technologies the transmission takes place through wires so that is the basic difference between the wired technologies and the wireless technologies we are we will discuss uh, more about the wireless uh, technologies or wireless networks in this particular talk so uh, the there are different types of wireless networks exist uh, in the today's society uh, depending on the coverage area depending on the data rate the wireless networks are classified into many so few of them are going to show in this particular slide the one is the wireless wide area network the wireless metropolitan area network wireless local area network wireless personal area network so these are the various uh, types of wireless networks emerged so far and a lot of research is going on in these areas to improve the efficiency of the each type of wireless sensor network for instance if you see the wireless wide area network by the name itself we can say so the devices so which are to be connected in this network worldwide so there is no limit for this so it can able to cover the the very very large area so the example for this type of uh, network communication is gsm so global system for mobile communications like 3g 4g satellite communication comes under this particular network so whereas uh, the second type of network if you see the wireless metropolitan area network so which can able to cover up to 50 kilometers that means within a city so we can able to connect the devices like computers laptops uh, various tabs which are to be connected in the network in order to communicate the information from one device to another in device so the communication is very very important in today's world without communication nothing is going to happen in the world so in the case of metropolitan area network the devices are connected up to the uh, radius 50 kilometers the example for this particular technology or the network uh, technology is IEEE 802.16 that is Y max coming to the third type of wireless network LAN which is mostly used in a limited geographical area so that is wireless, wireless local area network which can able to cover the distance up to 1.5 kilometers only that means uh, we can um, form the local area network within a limited geographical area like uh, office buildings and some university campuses where the devices like laptops mobiles and personal digital assistants which are to be connected to communicate to each other to share the files to share the information and so on coming to the last one which is the wireless personal area network which is by the name itself which can be formed with a limited number of devices within a short area so wireless personal area network can be operated within a small area up to 30 meters the example for this type of network is the bluetooth technology so we all have the bluetooth modules in our mobile phones that you know what is the use of bluetooth module so we can use the bluetooth modules to transmit the information from one device that is mobile device to another mobile device or one laptop to another laptop which are connected within a short span of distance that is 30 meters up to 30 meters so the Zigbee technology is also similar to the Bluetooth technology. So where some protocol uh, uh, standards are different compared to the Bluetooth technology, even the Zigbee technology can also be used. So in the wireless PAN, that is wireless personal area network. So this is the, the brief classification of wireless sensor networks. So when we talk about wireless sensor networks, so this is the just introduction of wireless networks. So where do the wireless sensor network fit among the different types of wireless sensor networks wireless networks so wireless sensor networks uh, uh, can fit in between the wireless lan and pan so that is wireless local area network and wireless personal area network so coming to the wireless lan because uh, it is the little extension of wireless lan what are the protocols used in the local area network to communicate the information from one layer to another layer mostly we use in the same kind of communication aspects and the protocols in the wireless sensor networks so let me tell the brief uh, details of the wireless lan and quickly we will move to the the basic components involved in the wireless sensor network so basically uh, there are uh, different modes of uh, wireless uh, local area network if you if we understand uh, how the communication takes place in the local area network wireless local area network it will be very easy to understand how to come how the communication takes place in the wireless sensor network basically there is some standard 
developed by um, IEEE Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, that is IEEE 802.11 standard. They defined the two modes of operation of the wireless LAN. One is the infrastructure mode and second one is the ad hoc mode. Basically in the infrastructure mode, this is the infrastructure mode where we can see uh, the different stations. The station is nothing but a laptop which is equipped with the wireless network interface cards. So, so that it can able to transmit the data to the access points. AP stands for access point. So it can also receive the data from another uh, station. So station means it is nothing but a device. It may be a mobile device or any laptop, tab, which is equipped with some wireless network adapter. So which are connected in a certain area, we call it as a uh, basic service set. So in this particular service set, there is one uh, access point so access point device is the bridge between the wireless networks and the wired networks there is a distributed system which is a which is nothing but a, a internet protocol network infrastructure so in order to bridge in order to connect the uh, networked devices with this distributed system the uh, uh, the access point devices are used so in this particular infrastructure, if you see, there are two small networks, uh, which we call it as wireless uh, local area networks. So these two networks are connected to the distributed system through some access point devices. So this is nothing but an infrastructure mode operation. Suppose if you want to transmit the information to the distributed system uh, and through uh, internet to everyone, so then uh, whatever the station devices used here, uh, transmits the information to the distributed system through access point uh, device. So access point device is nothing but a one type of um, um, uh, infrastructure which includes some radio that means the radio transceiver and it also includes the bridging software uh, bridging software in the sense which connects the wireless networks and the wired networks and uh, uh, various other modules uh, are included in the access point devices. What I mean to say an infrastructure uh, mode of operation includes the access point devices. Whereas the ad hoc mode, in the ad hoc mode, there will be no access point devices. Simply there will be some wireless uh, uh, network based devices, uh, means uh, some stations will be there in the ad hoc network. Let me show the diagram of the wireless ad hoc network. So this is a wireless ad hoc network uh, where the mobile phones, personal digital assistants, laptops are connected within a short span. So this is a ad hoc network or a temporary network. So a ad hoc network is usually one that exists for a limited time between two or more wireless devices. So here there are three wireless devices shown in the diagram. The mobile phone is one wireless device. The personal digital assistant is another wireless device. Laptop is another wireless device. These, all these three are connected to share the information uh, among each other. So this is this exists for a very small time. So there will be no access point devices in this ad hoc network, which is temporarily formed uh, to share the information. So this particular mode of uh, wireless local area network is very useful for quickly and easily setting up a wireless network anywhere, such as in hotel rooms, convention, cent convention centers, airports, where access to the wired network is bad. So that is the main advantage of ad hoc network compared to the um, uh, infrastructure based network. So uh, the point to be noted in this particular modes of wireless LAN, the same type of devices with some additional modules are used in the wireless sensor network. So, so these are the two modes of operation. So coming to the network performance, as I mentioned uh, in the previous slide, there are different types of wireless technologies like wireless uh, WAN, MAN, LAN, PAN. So the exam, this particular tabular form gives the information about the performance in terms of transmission speed, that is the data rate and uh, the delay uh, in between the transmission and the reception and the range to, to be covered. So if you see, for instance, the wireless local area network, the example for the wireless local network is Wi-Fi. So, which is a stand which follows the communication standards like IEEE 802.11. It can able to cover the, uh, the area up to 1.5 kilometers and the transmission speed, this particular technology offers the transmission speeds up to 
54 megabits per second. So it can able to transmit the data that we call, call it as throughput. So, so it gives the measure of speed of the technology, network technology. So the data rate is very important. In some applications, we need to transmit the more data. In some applications, we need to transmit very less data. And uh, coming to the latency, so the range, the data rate is very clear to you. You might have already seen in various communication modules. The latency is another important uh, parameter which gives the performance of the network. So that, that is the latency. Latency in the sense, how much time uh, the data takes to travel from the source to the destination. So in the case of a wireless local area network, it is interconnection of various uh, devices. Suppose in the network, one device would like to communicate the data that is that acts as a source uh, to another device which will act as a destination or sync node. So how much time the devices will take uh, to transmit from the source to the destination. So mostly in the local area network, it would be maximum of 20 milliseconds. Even in the wireless sensor networks also, it would be up to 20 milliseconds. So uh, the lot of research is uh, being uh, taken up by various research people to reduce this delay, that is the latency in, in the transmission from the source to the destination. So this, this particular table form gives the performance comparison of various uh, wireless technologies available in, in nowadays. So coming to the wireless sensor network. Now, we, we just uh, talk about the various types of uh, networks. So now the wireless sensor network comes uh, in between the wireless LAN and PAN. What are the protocols we use in LAN and PAN which are uh, applicable for this wireless sensor network? Basically, what is wireless sensor network? By the name itself, we can say, so it is a um, group of some specialized sensors or the transducers. Why I am calling specialized? So there are uh, different types of sensors available in the uh, nature in order to sense the various conditions of the environment that we are going to discuss in various applications. So every sensor, actually whatever the sensors we use in the sensor network are not only intended to monitor or sense it is also have the communication capability and the network capability. So that's why we call it as specialized sensor nodes. So that's why it is a group of specialized sensors with a communications interface infrastructure. So the sensors are embedded with the communication infrastructure or modules which are in, intended to sense and record the conditions at the diverse locations. So this is uh, the uh, some one of the definitions of the wireless sensor networks available in the literature. So in short, we can say a sensor network is a group of uh, some sensors to perform a specific task like to monitor or record the conditions of a specific location. So coming to the working process of the sensor network. So there are uh, three steps involved in the working process of sensor networks. First, uh, uh, the sensors are to be deployed are to be installed in the area where the conditions are to be monitored. So in the first step of the sensor network, there are some set of sensors available uh, which, which are shown here like uh, plus 60 sensors. More than uh, 60 sensors can also be available in various applications. So whatever the type of sensor, there are de different types of sensors available to monitor temperature, humidity, um, uh, various other parameters like voltage, current and so on. So whatever the quantity measured by the sensor that will be converted into digital value by some extra modules like ADC and so on. So the digitized information after, so the main purpose of the sensor here is to sense the information and it is to be converted into a digital value and it must be uh, combined with the some modulation techniques. So the sensor module also includes some modulation techniques that, that we will discuss a little later. So there are some digital modulation techniques, uh, digital communication techniques. So which includes some quadrature phase shift keying, binary uh, frequency shift keying and Gaussian frequency shift keying. These are the different types of uh, modulation techniques available in the digital communication, which are mostly used in nowadays in wireless technologies in order to communicate the information. So once the sensors have that some information or the data that must be uh, transmitted to another system that is the destination or the scene. In between, there are some wireless communication modules. If you see the second process, 
so we must use some kind of protocol so protocol in the sense some some, uh, some set of rules which are framed by some set of people uh, to communicate the information from one device to another device so there are different types of wireless communication modules like uh, if you see the symbols here so there are some bluetooth technology that is one communication module radio frequency identification technology that is one kind of wireless communication module and wi-fi so there are jigbee there are different types of communication modules any one communication module can be used in the wireless sensor network to transfer the sensed information to uh, any other system that is the third step involved in the working process of sensor network that is the open source uh, application programming interface there are uh, so end devices we can call it as a end devices uh, uh, which may be a android app or twitter or whatever so where we can see the data we can uh, present uh, the data for further analysis and controlling purpose this is the working process involved in the network in in, in another way we can say so uh, the working process of any sensor network if you see first the network is embedded in the environment for example we would like to uh, uh, have the conditions of the environment that environment may be a uh, forest environment uh, uh, the wildlife uh, environment there are different types of environments uh, we will see that is the industrial environment and uh, human body is also one type of environment so depending on the uh, environments there are different types of wireless sensor networks which we will discuss uh, we will see a little time later so the network is to be embedded uh, we, we just i am uh, giving the details of the working process uh, in another way so this is very important to understand the applications of the sensor networks so first uh, the network uh, you already know what is network the network is the combination of various sensor nodes because when we call it as a wireless sensor network it is a group of some sensor nodes uh, that network is to be deployed or embedded in the environment whose conditions are to be monitored so as i mentioned the network consists of the nodes the second step involved is what are the nodes present in the network once the network is embedded in the environment the nodes of that particular network which are equipped with some sensors and the actuators actuator is a device uh, which converts the energy into mechanical force or the displacement which is required to control that particular equipment so that particular nodes are equipped with some high efficient sensors and the actuators to measure and the influence that particular environment and the nodes will process the information and communicate it wirelessly so these are the steps involved uh, in the uh, wireless uh, sensor networks so we can call it we can also call the wireless sensor network as wireless sensor and actuator network that is w san so uh, what i mean to say in short we can say that the wireless sensor network is used to measure the conditions of a particular environment and also control the particular parameters of the environment so the wireless sensor and actuator networks are used to sense and control the various parameters of the environment that we will discuss what what are those various parameters to be measured and controlled in a respective environments okay so coming to the overview of the wireless sensor networks if from this particular slide i am just going to discuss the various components involved in the wireless sensor network and uh, what is the purpose of the various components later we will quickly go through the applications first we should understand what are the internal components involved in the wireless sensor network what are the requirements of the wireless sensor network basically any wireless sensor network if you see here the nodes which are uh, colored in blue which are connected in a systematic way so there are various topologies uh, available in the wireless sensor networks in what way the wireless nodes are to be connected so if you see here the box which is shown the left side is one wireless sensor network which consists of various nodes the nodes are represented by the blue color and there is a base station the base station is the end point device where that where the whatever the equipment used in the base station the purpose of the equipment used in the base station is to collect all the information from the nodes and uh, it will perform the aggregation as well and the fusion and that will be utilized for analysis and the controlling purpose that we will discuss uh, 
So the main uh, elements involved in any wireless sensor network, uh, the nodes are the main components which are equipped with some kind of communication infrastructure and network infrastructure and the base station. So this is the uh, uh, brief uh, elements involved in the wireless sensor network. So if you see here, this is the typical sensor arrangement. Just I am going to show the three typical uh, ways of communication we can say or connection we can say and so on. For example, in the uh, rightmost, if you see, there are circles are represented by the nodes and the double circles are represented by the clustering node, which we call it as cluster head. We will discuss what is cluster in the architectures. So basically, there are three nodes which uh, forms the single hop communication. The dotted lines represent the single hop communication, that is the wire, wireless links. So the circle represents the node which has the transmission and the receiving capability. The double circle represents the cluster head which is responsible for uh, gathering the information from these three nodes and that information is to be transmitted to the final processing node. The final processing node is a base station or we can call it as a server in some applications. So the server will receive the, all the information from the nodes uh, where the data can be processed and analyzed and for controlling purpose. That is a different thing. So the single hop communication means uh, source and destination. In the single hop communication, so there is a one circle in the if the rightmost if you see uh, there is a circle which we call it as a node which acts as a source that transmits the data. The data is traveled from the source node to the destination. In this context, the destination is the double circle which we call it as clustering node or cluster head. So this is the destination. If the communication takes place, if the data travels from the source to this destination without any intermediate devices, that type of communication is called single hop communication. So there is no intermediate network devices in between source and destination if there are no network devices. So if the communication takes place directly from the source to the destination, that type of communication is called single hop communication. There is another type of communication which is also mostly used in um, various sensor networks that is the multi hop communication. So suppose if you see the left leftmost of the slide, they, they, which performs the multi hop communication. So this is uh, one situation in the sensor network. If you see here, suppose uh, there is a cluster head which is represented by double circle. Double circle is the cluster head here. So suppose the one node, if, if, if you would like to uh, transmit the information to the cluster head, first this particular node transmits the information to the another node. So uh, actually here the single hop communication is not taking place. The source, the node acts as a source uh, that means uh, which transmits the information to the neighboring node. So there is an intermediate device uh, in between the source and the destination nodes. So this is the multi hop communication. So there are some more than one networking devices exist between the source node and the um, clustering node that is the multi hop communication. So in this way, all these cluster heads, if you see the typical sensor network diagram, all these cluster heads are responsible to communicate the gathered information with the final processing node. So this is one type of clustering hierarchy, which we mostly use in the wireless sensor networks in order to improve the efficiency of the sensor network. This is one type of uh, sensor network. Uh, by this time, you can understand what is single hop communication and the multi hop communication. In the single hop communication, the source information is directly transmitted to the destination without any intermediate networking devices. Whereas in the multi hop communication, uh, the source information is uh, transmitted to the destination node by using some intermediate devices. That is the multi hop communication. So both communications may would happen in various sensor networks. These are the different types and the types of nodes and the clustering nodes. The clustering, uh, what is clustering? What is the benefit of clustering? We will discuss a little time later. So these are the some of the participants we use in the wireless sensor network. It means the different uh, components involved in the wireless sensor networks. As I mentioned, the sources. Sources are nothing but the sensors. Uh, which sense the information of that particular environment and it provides the data that is the source. 
सिंग्स सिंग्स में भी इट मे बी ए बेस स्टेशन और उस चीज ए एक्सटर्नल एंटिटी इट मे बी ए पार्ट ऑफ द वायरलेस सेंसर नेटवर्क और इट मे नॉट बी ए पार्ट ऑफ द सेंसर नेटवर्क सिंक मीन्स विच कलेक्ट ऑल द इन्फॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम द सोर्सेस एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम द सोर्सेस एंड सिंग्स देर इज एनदर पार्टिसिपेंट आर द कॉम्पोनेंट इन द वायरलेस सेंसर नेटवर्क दट इज ए एक्चुएटर so actuator as i mentioned it uh, it is the one kind of mechanical device which utilizes the control signals and the energy to provide the needed force to operate some of the devices to control so for example if you want to operate the motor based on some uh, situation uh, so the motor is to be operated by the actuator so it may be a relay or a piston there are different types of actuators exist depending on the type of system so whatever it may be in general the actuator is one controlling device so based on the control signals based on the energy given to it it will perform the controlling action so this is another participant of the wireless sensor networks right so this particular slide speaks about various topologies involved in the wireless sensor network how the data propagates how the data travel from one node to another node and how uh, the nodes are connected in the network let us see so as i mentioned a sensor network is composed of large number of sensor nodes which are densely deployed there are different types of environments the nodes are deployed in the open environment for example the battle field the nodes are uh, deployed in front of or uh, back side of the battle field or the uh, enemy lines in order to monitor the conditions of the enemies so that is one type of environment that is the battlefield is one type of environment where we can use the sensor networks to check the enemy's equipment and uh, enemy's uh, uh, pictures uh, that means images and their videos and so on and the second type of environment is industrial environment where we can use some kind of sensors in order to monitor various parameters like pressure temperature humidity and so on and there is another environment Uh, by bi biological and chemically contaminated environments so uh, the sensor nodes are deployed in in those environments to check the conditions of that particular environment and human body the well known example is human body that is one type of uh, environment physiological environment where we can deploy some kind of sensors in order to know the physiological conditions and so on that we will discuss little later in the applications part so what i mean to say the sensors are densely deployed densely deployed means we can deploy a uh, few sensors or more than 100 sensors and so on depending on the application we can select the number of sensors to be used in the wireless sensor network topology in the sense in what way the sensor nodes are connected for communicating the information each other and to the base station there are different types of topologies we use in the wireless sensor network like bus topology star topology tree topology mesh ring circular and grid after this slide i will show in what way the sensor nodes are connected in the wireless sensor network in different topologies right so this particular slide shows the different topologies we use in the wireless sensor network the circle represents the circle inside and there is a small circle that represents the sensor node as you see in the slide the nodes are connected in the bus so there is one single line to that particular communication line the nodes are connected on either side this is the bus topology in the star topology the sync sync is the destination node or we can call it as a base station as per the terminology of wireless sensor network sync base station all are same which collects the information from all the nodes which are connected to it so this is a star topology grid topology ring topology circular topology mesh topology so out of all these topologies basically these topologies will give the information about how the nodes are connected to the sync so different topologies are applicable for different applications and different topologies have different benefits and limitations as well out of all these topologies the research says that the grid topology the third one if you see on top the grid topology is energy more energy efficient and whatever the nodes we use in the wireless sensor networks can work for long time that is the lifetime of the wireless sensor network basically the wireless sensor networks are operated by the batteries and other power supply sources so when we use the wireless sensor network the node consumes very high power so after some time after few days after few weeks or months 
the sensor node may die. One sensor node is said to be die when the battery is drained completely. So in some environments, we can replace the batteries. In some environments, we cannot replace the batteries. That we will discuss depending on the applications. Suppose if you use the wireless sensor network in the underground to explore the conditions of the tsunami and other things, then whatever the uh, nodes buried in the underground in order to uh, see the conditions of the earth, that means to predict the earthquakes and so on. So whatever the nodes buried inside the ground, underground, so once that the battery is drained completely, that node is said to be died that cannot be replaced. But in the terrestrial um, environments, outside environments where the feasibility is there, so the batteries of that particular node can be replaced. So there are different situations in the wireless sensor nodes. What I mean to say, the energy efficiency of the wireless sensor network mainly depends on the energy levels available in the various nodes of the networks. So the grid topology, uh, in the grid topology, the source is at the bottom. If you see the third one, top, in the top, the third one, last one, the grid topology, there is a source represented by the rectangle which is responsible for uh, sending the information from this location through some intermediate nodes to the sea. So in what way the data is to be transmitted? So there are some routing protocols. So the nodes will try to find the shortest path to transmit the information from the source to the sea. So if it uh, takes the longer path, then the transceiver, whatever we used in the uh, sensor node, will consume more power. So if the communication distance increases, the transmission power also increases. Indirectly, that is nothing but a battery of the sensor node. So the nodes should try to find a uh, shortest path to transmit the information from one location to the sink or the base station. So out of all these topologies, the grid topology is the one which is said to be a more energy efficient topology commonly used in various applications where the energy is a uh, critical parameters. Coming to the second thing, uh, we have seen the topology in what way the sensor nodes are to be connected. The second aspect is data propagation, how the data is propagated from one node to another node. So there are different uh, protocols available in the wireless sensor networks, routing protocols we call it as. Routing in the sense, so uh, as I mentioned in the uh, grid topology, the one node, so suppose in the one node in the network senses some information that should be transmitted to the sink or the base station within a minimum time. Then it should follow a specific path our shortest path to transmit that information without loss of information to the sink. So that is a routing. Flooding in the sense, there is another concept of data propagation, flooding, where a specific path is not followed. Instead, if, if one sensor in the node senses information of the one environment, immediately that will transmit that information to the neighboring node only, not to the sink. So the neighboring node, again, that once it receives, that will transmit that information to that, to that neighboring node. In this way, so the flooding, in the flooding type of uh, propagation, there is no specific, specific path to be followed to transmit the information from the source to the sink. But in order to improve the efficiency of the network, the lifetime of the network in terms of the energy, some routing protocols are to be used in the propagation. That is very, very important. So the lot of research is going on in the development of the routing protocols in the area of wireless sensor networks. Coming to the third one, architecture, which is very important in the distributed architecture. So the sensor nodes are distributed and which are interconnected. So whereas the second type of architecture, which is mostly used in the wireless sensor network, that is the clustered architecture. Clustered architecture means Suppose if there is an environment, the environment is divided into different clusters, different groups. So the nodes are formed into different clusters or the groups and each group is assigned by the cluster head or the cluster node. That cluster head or the cluster node is responsible for gathering the information related to that particular location and to transmit as I have shown in the previous slide. So that particular cluster head is responsible for transmitting the respect to nodes with whatever connected to the head to the base station or the sink. So the cluster hierarchy is said to be more energy efficient, whereas the grid type of topology is said to be more energy efficient. Even in the development of architecture also, how the clusters are to be formed. 
how, and how the cluster heads are to be selected. So the lot of research is going on in the development of algorithms or protocols you know, for the selection of clusters, number of clusters and the cluster head selection and so on in this particular area. So this is the clustered architecture if you see here. So the clustered architecture is the very important and uh, very useful uh, structure in the wireless sensor networks. If you, as I mentioned, there are four clusters formed in a particular area. There is a zigzag area which is mentioned by this uh, bordered line. So there are four clusters are formed. The four clusters are formed in such a way that the entire environment is covered. That is the load balancing. For example, if you see here, there is an environment which is zigzag manner, which is in a zigzag manner. So the four clusters are formed. Each cluster consists of some set of nodes. For instance, if you see, there is one, the bottom most cluster. It is formed with the four nodes with the cluster head. So this cluster head is also a sensor node. These five nodes are formed as a cluster. And out of all these five nodes, one node can act as a cluster head. So the, I, as I mentioned, the clustering node or the cluster head is responsible to transfer the information of the remaining four nodes which are connected to it to the base station. BS means base station. So in this particular region, whatever the sensors involved in the cluster, sends the information related to that environment and that will uh, transmit that information to the cluster head and the cluster head is only responsible to transmit that information to the base station after data aggregation and the data fusion. So in this way, there are four clusters formed in the entire area and there are four cluster heads. After some time, the role of cluster head is changed. For some time, the one node acts as a cluster head. After some time, the another node will act as a cluster head and the, whatever the uh, cluster head, whatever the role performed by the cluster head that will act as a regular node or the normal node. So there are different clustering algorithms or the protocols in order to improve the efficiency. Suppose if there is only one node, if the cluster head every time transmits the information to the base station or to the neighboring cluster head, so that will consume more power once the battery which is used in this particular power source used in this cluster head drains, then that particular node set to be died. Then it will become inactive. So that should not happen. So the cluster head uh, role must be rotated among the clusters. So the, there are some protocols and algorithms developed how to rotate the role of cluster head among the clustering nodes. So that is the um, uh, protocol we use in the clustered architecture. What I mean to say, once the, all these cluster heads transmit the information to the base station, the user can able to see the sensor information from that environment through the internet. So the base station transmits the information. So in the wireless sensor network, we call it as a base station, which is responsible for transmitting the information to the user. Whereas in the wireless local area network, we call it as a um, access point device. So access point devices are responsible to uh, get that information from the, all the devices and to show that information to the user or any other external system. So this is a clustered architecture. So coming to the now, so far we have seen the various topologies involved in the wireless sensor networks and uh, various uh, propagation techniques and the architectures. So coming to the node. So when we talk about one sensor node, what it consists? If you see this particular block diagram, uh, every sensor node is equipped with a sensor, sensing unit, processing unit, the transceiver, power unit, power module. So if you see the sensing unit, all the modules requires the power for its operation. So the power unit is nothing but a battery operated. There is a power generator, which is the optional block. Some sensor nodes may have the power generator block, may not have the power generator block. In some cases, the, if the sensor node is uh, powered by the solar cell, then so solar cell acts as a power generator or the standby uh, for that particular node. So here, the main components of any sensor node is the sensing unit. As I mentioned, there are different types of sensors available in the nature to sense the various parameters. So whatever the sensor senses the information that is analog in nature, which is to be converted into digital value, the digitized value is given as an input for the processing unit. The processing unit consists of a microcontroller or the microprocessor with some memory 
elements so the processor it may be a 8 bit microprocessor or the 16 bit microprocessor the you know what is the use of microcontroller or the microprocessor which is used for the processing the information and for transmission purpose and there is a transceiver so the transceiver is the very very important component of a wireless sensor node so it uses a radio uh, transmission techniques so the transceiver in the sense which transmits the information so when we talk about one sensor node the sensor node should able to should able to transmit the information and it should able to receive the information so that is the transceiver so this transceiver uh, uses the radio frequency in the ism band industrial scientific medical band mostly the transceivers are operated in the frequency range or bandwidth of 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz and the transceivers use various digital modulation techniques as i mentioned at the beginning so the transceivers use transceiver of any sensor node uses various digital modulation techniques like um, quadrature phase shift keying and binary uh, frequency shift keying gaussian frequency shift keying and so on. in the bluetooth technology we use uh, gaussian frequency shift key so as a digital modulation technique because these digital modulation techniques are uh, you know, use very low power in the order of millivolts and it can be used for shorter distance as well so the transceiver is responsible for transmitting the information apart from this sensing unit processing unit and transceiver it also consists of lo location finding system in some applications we need to know where that particular um, node is available so there is some gps module we use global positioning system modules along with the sensor node to know the location of the node once the node is deployed some for, for example in the forest we deployed some sensor nodes by means of plane from the aircraft some uh, nodes are uh, randomly thrown in the forest in order to detect the uh, fire in the forest so uh, some of the nodes may change its location because of the water or because of uh, some wind the location may change so the location finding system is the one which is the gps which will tell us about the location of that particular uh, uh, node and the mobilizer mobilizer is one type of equipment embedded with the sensor node in order to move the sensor node from one location to another location so uh, the location finding system mobilizer these are the optional blocks which are available in the sensor node so depending on the application the mobilizer module can be attached to the sensor node and uh, location finding systems are also optional blocks okay so these are the various components involved in the one wireless sensor nodes so the description if you see now uh, there is a memory sensor nodes will have programmable flash memory and some ram in in some of the cases in order to store the information but uh, very low memory is available in the sensor node the mobilizer we have seen it can able to move the sensor from one place to another place so the radio transceiver it is very important uh, uh, element of the wireless sensor network as i mentioned because the radio transceiver the component which is radio transceiver is responsible for consuming the more power there are various uh, modes of operation in the radio transceiver like transmit mode receive mode idle mode uh, and turn off mode so when the sensor node tries to transmit the information it consumes more power and when they receive the information also it will consume some power when the node is in the turn off mode or sleep mode it consumes very low power there are various modes of operation of the transceiver mode the protocols are also developed to change the mode of operation for example whenever the sensor node uh, do not receive any information to transmit or receive then that particular transceiver should go into the turn off mode or sleep mode there are some protocols developed by research people to change the mode of operation of the transceiver from transmit receive to turn off or sleep in order to save the energy of that particular node so that is the when we talk about the energy efficiency of the network lifetime of the network the radio transceivers are to be operated in a optimal way when that means whenever the node senses some information then only it should be in the transmit or receive mode operation in the rest of the time the transceiver must be operated in the turn off or sleep mode even in the idle mode idle mode influences just before the transmit or receive mode idle mode also consumes some power mostly 
the transmit and receive mode must be turned into turn off or sleep mode when there is no information to sense for the particular sensor node so these are the some of the protocol there are some protocols developed uh, by the research people to change the mode of operation of the transceiver and the extreme care is to be taken there should not be uh, quick changes of the uh, mode of operation of the radio transceiver from uh, on to off that means turn off to transmit or transmit to turn off uh, if it happens so then it may um, lost some of the information what are available in that particular sensor node as a radio receiver as i mentioned it is one of the components of the sensor node so the wireless radio receivers must be operated in a efficient manner as i mentioned there are three types of communication uh, happen in wireless sensor network that is the direct communication and uh, single hop communication and clustered communication so in the direct communication the direct communication means Uh, if you see the diagram there are various nodes deployed in a particular environment so there is a base station base station may be any laptop equipped with the wireless network interface all these nodes are capable of transmitting the information of the sensed uh, parameters so in the direct communication the nodes directly communicate the respective information to the base station without any intermediate nodes so here uh, this direct communication is used in some of the applications like in biomedical applications like in the wireless body area networks the direct communication is uh, mostly we use so in the single hop communication the uh, the main uh, disadvantage of the direct communication is so every node every time it transmits the information to the base station so that should not happen so that's why Uh, the nodes lifetime may reduce the direct communication is uh, mostly used in some applications where the battery is easily reachable so in such cases the direct communication is preferable so single hop communication as i mentioned so in the nodes directly transmit information to the base station that means the nodes acts as the source nodes base station acts as a sync node so that is the distinction the data travel from uh, no, source Of the sync node directly. Multi-hop communication. Uh, this is the multi-hop communication. The base station is shown by the laptop here. The nodes will communicate each other. So once the node is, uh, uh, once the node senses the information, that information is passed to the neighboring node, and uh, from the neighboring node, it will communicate the information to the base station. That means. between the source node and the base station which is a sync node there are some intermediate nodes so this is called multi hop communication the so multi hop communication is mostly used in routing uh, uh, routing uh, technologies so this is a cluster communication uh, we have seen the clustered architecture in the previous slide so uh, some nodes are formed into clusters and each cluster is uh, assigned by a cluster head ch means the cluster head the cluster heads are only responsible to transmit the information to the base station in this case uh, all the nodes will work for more time that means the network time will be improved in the clustered communication when we prefer the clustered communication uh, the lifetime of the nodes can be improved that's why the clustered hierarchy the clustered architecture we can call it as and clustered communication is mostly preferable in the wireless sensor networks in order to improve the efficiency so these are the different types of communications uh, possible in the wireless sensor network there are some node constraints so when one when we design a sensor node so we must use the low power processor so the processing capability is limited and whatever the memory we use in the sensor node is also limited the radio transceiver whatever we use in the sensor node has a low power low data rate it can able to transmit very less data the throughput is very less so that can able to operate in a limited range so these are the some of the constraints of the sensor node so while designing the sensor networks by we have to keep these constraints in the mind uh, for the designing of the sensor network for any applications so overall the sensor node uh, the designing of the sensor node should uh, uh, satisfy some of the constraints like it should uh, consume very low power it should uh, it should be very uh, less expensive 
and it can able to communicate up to short distance this is because of these constraints in the sensor node the wireless sensor networks as well uh, also have these constraints in their operation so these are the some of the examples of the sensor nodes there are different nodes uh, uh, manufactured by the different uh, people the mica mort node this is uh, already available in the market so as i mentioned whatever the components involved in the sensor node which are all embedded in the same chip so uh, mica mort family ice nodes bt nodes these are the different types of nodes available which are mostly used in the developed wireless sensor networks so this is the real time view of the network so for instance if you see this is a mica node these nodes are developed at university of california at berkeley so this mica nodes are used in the development of the wireless sensor networks so these nodes have the different sensors inbuilt so for the measurement of various parameters depending on the uh, requirement suppose if you if you want to measure the temperature humidity and other parameters accordingly some modules are available mica mode nodes are available so depending on the our requirement we can select the mica nodes or ice nodes and so on for the development of the sensor network so this is the ice node these nodes are developed by Indian in the context of European Union sponsored project that is energy efficient sensor networks. So this particular node is more energy efficient compared to the mica node. So this particular node is also mostly used in the wireless sensor networks. So this is the BT node. This node was developed at the ETH Zurich, Zurich. So this is the one another type of node. So these are the different types of uh, uh, practically available nodes for the development of sensor network. So now let us uh, quickly go through the applications part as the time is also approaching. Excuse me. So coming to the smart cities. So when we call it as a smart city, the main objective of the smart city is to uh, consume very low energy. So the wireless sensor networks introduces us a new concept in our life, which is a smart city. So this smart city will permit us to know several parameters of the city, like city pollution, noisy points, smart line management, and many other applications. So the wireless sensor networks are used in all these uh, areas. So uh, when when the wireless sensor networks are deployed in the city in order to uh, check the conditions of the pollutions and the noisy uh, sound pollutions and so on and the leakage of the water we can make it uh, sm uh, smart and uh, in order uh, once the wireless sensor networks are deployed in the cities we can improve the uh, efficiency of that particular city or we can um, reduce the usage of the energy as well so this is the smart city the smart city is one of the applications of the wireless sensor network so we call a smart world so this particular picture gives us the various applications of the wireless sensor networks uh, in the world. So we, in order to uh, check the air pollution, the wireless sensor networks are used in the particular city or the region. In order to f detect the fire in the forest, some type of wireless sensor networks are used. There are various applications in the uh, world to make it smart. So once the wireless sensor networks are deployed in the world, we can make the world smart. That is our objective. So there are various deployment options. Deployment means the installation of the nodes, how the nodes are deployed in a particular environment. There are various deployment options like random deployment, regular deployment. Random deployment means by using some uh, aircraft, we can deploy or we can throw some sensor nodes from the aircraft in the forest so that in order to know, in order to check the uh, our see the fire detection so uh, regular deployment means it is a well planned suppose if you want to make the home smart so we have a regular uh, fixed plan in the in such case so the nodes sensor nodes are installed in various places of the home uh, in the energy meter suppose if we can able to uh, uh, record the energy of the energy consumed by the uh, meter so uh, we can see the conditions of the refrigerator. We can see the conditions of the air conditioners. So there are different uh, home appliances we have. In order to make the home uh, smart, we can deploy some sensor nodes and the data 
can be gathered at one place. We can use that for analysis purpose and controlling purpose as well. So in the mobile sensor nodes, so in lunar rover, moon rover, which is a space exploration vehicle, which also uses the mobile sensor nodes, which can able to move from one place to another place by its own. So some sensor nodes can move based on the conditions in that particular environment from one place to another place. So this is the deployment options for the wireless sensor networks. And the maintenance options, maintenance in the sense, whatever the nodes we use in the wireless sensor networks uh, must be uh, operated in an energy efficient manner. So energy efficient manner means whatever the sources available in the wireless sensor node. So is it possible to replace the batteries or if there is a feasibility, we can replace the batteries. In some applications, we cannot replace the batteries. For example, in the battlefield, in the battlefield, whatever the wireless sensor network we use, uh, we cannot replace the batteries because it is already deployed in the battlefield uh, near to the enemies. So we cannot, the human being cannot go there and cannot uh, replace the batteries of that particular sensor node, one sensor node of that network. So uh, if, uh, the replacement batteries is not possible in some of the applications. In some applications, we can provide the supply from the solar by in the form of solar cells. So solar cells are equipped with the uh, sensor nodes to give the energy. So there are some maintenance options of the sensor nodes in the wireless sensor network. So these are the, some of the requirements of the sensor network. In order to design a sensor network, that particular network must have the scalability. So it can must accommodate more number of nodes. So uh, that is nothing but scalability. So whatever the developed wireless sensor network must have the feature of scalability. Uh, the nodes with whatever we use in the wireless sensor network must use the low energy. That's why uh, the efficiency of the network can be improved. So the network self configuration, self organization. So when the nodes are deployed in a particular area, it must organize by itself based on the situations of the environment. That is the one requirement of the wireless sensor network. In order to happen this self organization, the network protocols are to be used in the wireless sensor network. So there are various network protocols and data link layer protocol, physical layer protocols uh, to improve or to achieve all these requirements. Collaborative signal processing, that is another important requirement. So whatever the information sensed by the sensors, that information must be aggregated and uh, processed in an efficient way uh, without any redundancy in the information. And query ability. So this is another requirement of the wireless sensor network. So uh, the, what I mean to say, whatever the things mentioned in this particular slide, which are the requirements for the development of the wireless sensor networks. So these are the some of the characteristics of the wireless sensor networks. Let me quickly go through because of the lack of time. Let me quickly go through the applications. So these are the some of the characteristics of the WLAN and uh, right coming to the applications. There are various applications of the wireless sensor networks. So basically the development of wireless sensor networks was originally motivated by military applications. As I mentioned in the battlefield surveillance, uh, some nodes are deployed to know the movements of the enemies, to know the uh, movements of the uh, enemies uh, equipment for that W wireless sensor networks were developed at the initial stages. Uh, after later on, the wireless sensor networks are used in many industrial and civilian application areas, including military applications, environmental applications, health applications, healthcare applications, home. So when we deploy the sensor network in the home, we can make it smart home and commercial applications in industrial process monitoring. Some of the applications which we are going to discuss quickly in two to three minutes. So based on the application, we can call it as the network as uh, underwater wireless sensor network, underground wireless sensor network, multimedia wireless sensor network and so on. So disaster relief operations. So if you see, so the sensor nodes are dropped from an aircraft over a wild fire. So if you see the leftmost, in order to detect the fire, the sensor nodes are deployed in the forest. So once the fire is detected, the necessary actions can be taken. Biodiversity mapping, in order to know the biodiversity of the uh, wildlife, we can deploy some of the nodes in the forest and intelligent buildings and the bridges. If you see here, there is a bridge. If you see the diagram, there is a bridge. Suppose if any earthquake happens in order to monitor the cracks in the bridge, some of the nodes are installed in the bridge construction. 
are on top of the surface of the bridge in order to uh, monitor the cracks of that particular bridge due to the earthquake or any other stress because uh, bridge means uh, some so many vehicles go uh, every day because of the stress uh, because of the aged because of the age some of the cracks may happen in the bridge in order to uh, monitor that is called health monitoring of the bridge in order to monitor the health of the particular bridge uh, the sensor nodes can be used and the buildings we can call it as intelligent building if the building is equipped with the wireless sensor network the corresponding building we can call it as an intelligent building which is under surveillance of various sensors so intelligent building in the sense and the sensors are used in various places at the water inlets and outlets if there is any water leakage it can able to sense uh, even in the place of power power uses loads fans and in various places fire detection so various sensors are deployed in the buildings in order to um, make the building as smart so that we can able to save some of the energies it may be water power and so on so these are the some of the examples of the wireless sensor networks the well known application is wireless sensor network is wireless body area network so types of wireless sensor networks also we can say it as wireless body area network which means that the network which is used on the body of the patient so in this case what we do the various sensors are installed there are different types of sensors implanted sensors surface sensors external sensors implanted sensors means the sensors which are installed inside of the human body like pacemaker implantable defibrillator defibrillators and electronic pills these are the different types of implanted sensors which are used to know the conditions of the patient uh, inside the body how the condition is and surface sensors uh, which are uh, installed on the surface uh, in order to know the electrocardiogram electroencephalogram electromyogram to know the conditions of the patient external sensors some sensors are placed near to the human body to know the how far the uh, patient or the human being is from that particular sensor so these are the what i mean to say all these types of sensors are used in the wireless body area network in order to uh, collect the important health parameters like blood pressure blood sugar heart rate and other vital parameters so based on these health parameters are the physiological parameters monitoring uh, we can send this information so if you see there is a human body on top of the human body various sensors are installed all these sensors are formed in a network that is called wireless body area network. there is a pda personal digital assistant which, which we call it as a gateway this gateway acts as a sink at the base station which will collect all this information from all the sensors and that will transmit to the uh, hospital or the respective uh, people for the diagnosis and the treatment that is the main objective of wireless sensor network in the case of patients so the respective network is called wireless body area network this is the uh, particular slide shows the medical applications of wireless sensor network through internet that the personal digital assistant sends the information to the healthcare people like physicians medical information database and emergency if there is any el elderly people are there in the home so uh, the if uh, the elderly people are elderly people are equipped with the wireless body area network if there is any abnormality in the conditions then that uh, pda personal digital assistant can send the information to the emergency department so that the people can alert and can uh, save the life of the elderly people so there are various uh, benefits of the wireless body area networks in the healthcare so the second one is underwater wireless sensor network this is the another type which can call it as application of the wireless sensor network so these networks consists of several sensor nodes and vehicles deployed under the water so uh, uh, in order to uh, know or explore what is happening in the under the water the sensor nodes are deployed so in order to uh, detect the tsunamis the well known example is tsunami forecasting forecasting of the tsunami the under underwater wireless sensor networks are used so what i what i mean to say here there are different types of wireless sensor networks i am speaking body area network underwater wireless sensor network all these networks requires the different designing requirements because the environments are different, different wireless sensor networks in the case of wireless body area network the environment is different in the case of underwater uh, wireless sensor network the environment is different that is the under the water in the under the water the challenge is 
a challenge for, of underwater communication is long propagation delay which means that whatever the sensor node which is uh, uh, installed under the water to explore some conditions like tsunami and other things uh, sends uh, sends the information to the another device which is uh, outside of the water that is the overground uh, uh, overground so there is a long propagation delay that will take more time to transmit the information from water to the air in the air the propagation delay is low but in the water the propagation delay is more so and the bandwidth sensor failures may also happen so these are the some of the challenges we need to consider when we deal with underwater wireless sensor networks so there are various requirements for the underwater require, underwater wireless sensor networks that will, uh, i am not going to discuss because of the lack of time quickly let me move the underwater wireless sensor network is used in the tsunami forecast uh, as i mentioned this is one of the applications the third type of network is wireless underground sensor network underground so in order to um, um, monitor the earthquakes landslides sports field maintenance uh, cricket grounds uh, football grounds they uh, bury some kind of uh, nodes inside to know the humidity conditions soil conditions and so on so uh, this particular underground uh, sensor networks requires some uh, special type of communication there are three types of communication takes place in the underground sensor networks this underground sensor network is different from underwater sensor network so in the underground sensor network three types of communications take place that is underground to underground underground to overground overground to underground these are the different types of communications usually takes place in the underground sensor networks some special requirements are needed in this in the designing of the underground sensor networks in the case of protocols and and so on. so these are the some of the application precision agriculture uh, for uh, knowing the soil conditions some uh, sensors are buried inside to know the soil conditions and so on so that uh, we can call it as precision agriculture so there are various requirements are uh, given in this particular slide so the fourth one is multimedia wireless sensor network the multimedia wireless sensor networks uh, are proposed to enable tracking and monitoring of events in the form of multimedia such as imaging video and audio if you see here so battlefield that is the multimedia so the nodes which are deployed in the battlefield so there are enemies if you see by using aircraft so the nodes are deployed in the battlefield to capture the images of the enemy movements to capture the images of the um, uh, enemy's equipment and so on so video cameras are used in the sensor node what are the sensor nodes here uh, uses the cameras microphones inside so infrared cameras video cameras microphones all are used in the sensor nodes whatever we use in the multimedia wireless sensor network so the, these networks the multimedia wireless networks consists of low cost sensor nodes which are equipped with microphones in order to capture the audios of the enemies or any other applications uh, in order to capture the videos of the enemy movements that is cameras are used in the sensor nodes these nodes are interconnected with each other over a wireless connection for data compression data retrieval and correlation these are the some of the aspects of multimedia wireless sensor network so there are various challenges uh, involved in the designing of the multimedia wireless sensor networks when we deal with uh, data that means video data and audio data so the wireless sensor network must have high energy consumption so uh, whatever the radio receiver used in the multimedia wireless sensor network consumes very high energy because in order to transmit the video data or audio data the radio receiver consumes very high power so uh, the sensor nodes whatever we use in the multimedia wireless sensor networks must meet the high bandwidth requirements uh, high energy consumption that means the batteries must be must have the high energy levels and so on so and these are the some of the requirements for the designing of the multimedia wireless habitat monitoring this is the another applications in order to monitor the conditions of the habitats so we use some wireless sensor networks so uh, there are various other applications like in the industrial processes the wireless sensor networks are used and a smart home control system so because of the lack of time i am not able to cover all these things let me quickly go through one or two slides and conclude this particular presentation in order to improve the efficiency and the lifetime of the wireless sensor networks um, uh, we have to operate the transceiver as, in the sleep mode as much as possible so these are the some of the uh, solutions uh, me along with my research team along uh, we we uh, gave some solutions in order to improve the efficiency of the 
wireless sensor network in the form of development of protocols and so on. So these are the some of the solutions to improve the lifetime of the wireless sensor networks. Let me quickly go through it. So uh, we use wireless sensor networks in the smart grid as well. So in the smart grid, we use various sensors. This is the list. And uh, the, the research issues in the wireless sensor networks in the case of smart grid and the factors influencing the sensor network design, fault tolerance, scalability. So these are the various factors which we need to see while designing the network design. And uh, these uh, factors are to be considered while designing the sensor network. So, right. The, there are some interesting areas of the research like uh, sensor network still at an early stage in terms of technology uh, needs uh, improved our new routing protocols. Routing, you know, how the data is to be propagated from one node to another node. So there are various protocols developed for this. Uh, so uh, the researchers who are interested in this, they can take up the routing protocols in order to improve the efficiency of the network. Uh, energy efficiency, uh, clustering hierarchies, uh, how the clusters are to be formed, the cluster heads are to be formed. In that also, the research can be uh, done. So there are different areas. So these are the some of the active areas in the wireless sensor network. So uh, let me quickly go through the summary of this presentation. So later we will uh, go to the uh, questions and answer session. So this particular talk uh, started with the discussion on different types of wireless networks, like wireless uh, WAN, PAN, MAN, and uh, uh, MAN, etc. And we have seen the performance of the various networks. So the wireless sensor networks mostly fit in between the wireless local area network and the wireless personal area network. So depending on the area of the environment, if in the case of uh, wireless body area network, we use wireless personal area network. In the case of wild uh, forest or the battlefield, we use wireless local area network. So there are different uh, applications. Accordingly, we can select the type of wireless network. And we have seen the overview and the basic node architecture of the wireless sensor network, which is discussed with the diagrams. And we have seen the various communication aspects of the sensor networks, like direct communication, single hop communication, that is multi hop communication and clustered communication. So these are the various communication aspects. And apart from that, what are the transceivers we use in the uh, sensor node, the transceivers use some digital communication techniques like uh, modulation techniques, digital modulation techniques like uh, QPSK, uh, B, uh, binary phase shift keying and so on. Those are the communication aspects of the sensor networks. And we have we have also seen the research issues in the development of protocols and algorithms in order to improve the efficiency of the uh, network. Uh, that we can work on the routing protocols, we can work on the clustering hierarchies in order to improve the efficiency of the wireless sensor network, which we have also seen. Uh, after that, we have seen the various applications of the wireless sensor networks, like uh, depending on the area of application, we can name it as uh, wireless body area network. Wireless body area networks is nothing but one type of wireless sensor networks, which are exclusively used to monitor the phys physiological conditions of the patient. And uh, uh, the wireless sensor networks, which are used to explore the underwater conditions. So that is underwater wireless sensor network. Uh, the wireless sensor network, which is used to explore the underground conditions, to explore the aisle and other things. Uh, under, underground wireless sensor networks are used, sports, field maintenance, precision, agriculture, and so on. So those kind of wireless sensor networks, we call it as underground wireless sensor networks. So terrestrial wireless sensor networks are used, which are used in the open place, like in the forest, in the battlefield, in other industrial areas, we, we call it as multimedia wireless sensor networks, where the videos and the audio software respective environment can be needed. In the lunar rover, lunar rover is one sensor node, uh, which, uh, which is a space exploration vehicle used to uh, explore the conditions on the surface of the moon. That is one type of node we can consider as a node which will send the information in the form of videos and audios to the base station, to the Earth planet, to so that we can able to see the conditions of uh, the water and uh, if there is any available water is availability or air availability and environmental conditions on the moon. We can able to see from the uh, captured pictures and the videos uh, of by the lunar rovers. So with this, uh, uh, this particular talk is completed. So these are the some of the uh, publications uh, 
uh, of uh, me and the research team. So we published uh, various papers in the IEEE census and uh, some of the references I'm quickly going through. And uh, with this, uh, this talk is completed. So thank you very much. Uh, if there are any queries, uh, please. Thank you very much, Doctor. It was very informative. So we not only had a very good introduction to the wireless sensor networks, but Thank also you. you covered the applications and the possible uh, research scope areas. So uh, uh, I want to um, put down the questions asked by our participants. As we are lacking of time, I'll just uh, post uh, only two questions here. OK. OK, Doctor, can so you do yeah, uh, you want me to come out from this uh, entire full screen mode, right? Oh, okay. Doctor, can you uh, see the question on your slide? Yeah, I, mean, uh, yeah. Uh, I have seen one, one question. Let me read it. So, yeah. hello, sir. Thank you for this uh, informative session. How can we use the wireless sensor network to monitor and control the greenhouse using microcontrollers like Arduino? There are some modules like ESP8266 uh, or ESP32, which can be used for wireless communication. Could you please uh, shed some light on this? Okay. So greenhouse monitoring, it's very uh, important uh, thing. Uh, very good question. So I think uh, Ahmed Sohail. Right. So uh, wireless sensor networks can be equipped with uh, microcontrollers. So, you know, Arduino is one type of microcontroller, Atmega328 microcontroller we can use. So, we can connect those microcontrollers. Uh, so, we can connect some sensors to the Arduino board in order to monitor the greenhouse conditions like uh, uh, soil conditions, uh, humidity, light and uh, other conditions. Various sensors are to be equipped with the Arduino board. So, there will be an Arduino board, there will be some uh, analog channels. So what are the parameters we would like to measure in the greenhouse? So those parameters are uh, measured by means of respective sensors, which are to be connected to the Arduino board. So the Arduino board is equipped with some microcontroller unit and some memory unit and the communication modules as well. So that the information is processed and that can be sent to the external systems through cloud and uh, there are various platforms we use to transmit the information by using GSM technology we can transmit the sensitive information related to the greenhouse to various uh, uh, mobile devices so we can see what I mean to say the parameters related to the greenhouse uh, sensed by the respective sensors we can analyze in our mobile phones or in the laptop uh, even in the uh, cloud also we can see that uh, save that particular information so which can be used for wireless communication we can use uh, um, uh, various uh, wi-fi modules we can use to communicate the sensor information uh, we can save that information in the clouds so i think i have soil uh, i think this particular answer is clear to you any other questions Right. So, has there been any concluding study on the impact of wireless technology on human health and general well-being? Yes. Yes. So, uh, human health and general well-being. So, as I mentioned, uh, we use uh, wireless body area networks. So, there are lot. The lot of research is going uh, is happening in the field of wireless body area networks. So how the body area, wireless body area networks are uh, used to monitor the health of a patient, how the data is diagnosed, how the treatment can be provided through wireless, that is the um, telehealth we call it as, telemedicine, telehealth. So this wireless, uh, network, wireless sensor networks offers telehealth and telemedicine uh, uh, etc so there are various research papers available so i suggest uh, jacqueline uh, so please refer the various uh, research papers which are available on the wireless body area networks even uh, other research is also being done in the wireless body area networks in order to minimize the interference uh, that is the interference mitigation so that is also possible so hope uh, this is clear the lot of research is going on in this
Okay. So uh, I think uh, that's all we have time now. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, on behalf of the School of Engineering at Asia Pacific University, I would like to thank Associate Professor Dr. Narayana for uh, delivering uh, such an interesting and a very uh, elaborative uh, topic. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, you, that's sir. the end of today's session. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for giving me this wonderful opportunity.